Uh, welcome, everybody, to the cinema of the DFF, um, to the special screening of My Life as an Actor. We have the director with us tonight, uh, Eric de Kuiper, so I, let's give a warm uh, welcome applause to him, and he's going to say a few words before the film, and then we'll um, have a, a nice opportunity to discuss the film afterwards. So I hope you also stay around for that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, thank you very much. Thank you very much to show the film, to screen the film in Frankfurt. It's the German premiere of uh, my life as an actor. Uh, and the reason why it took so long to reach Germany is uh, one of the main problems we had with the film. It's a no-budget film. Uh, not low, but no budget at all. Uh, we made it, of course, with money, because filmmaking means a little money. We get grant for the script, uh, but nothing else. Then we ask for friends to give us crowdfunding. It was not very much. Uh, our, French, our friends are not that rich. But anyway, we had 5,000 euro, and then we wrote another script for another film. We got a grant for it, so okay, the film was never made, and I don't know if it will ever be made. And <coughs> that's the most important thing, I think. We had the chance uh, to have a very professional uh, cameraman who worked on all most of all my films, uh, but who was very professional, so he had to, to work to earn money. But when he was free, he said, oh, next month I have three days, I'll be free. Can we do something? So it was once in a while that we could uh, do, uh, that he could work on uh, my film. So, uh, the other thing was that the editor was the same kind of problem, uh, you know, he, when he had time, he did the editing. So, it took a long time to shoot the film. And what did we do in between? In between, we did something I think was interesting, because we wanted to stay in the spirit of the film. You know, so we do the kind. We did the kind of performance with the script, live performance. Uh, we were acting the script, parts of the script. It was a little adapted, and we were showing the parts of, of the film who were already shot. So it was a mixture of live work in progress. You know. <coughs> And it was also good for some other actors in the film to stay in the mood, you know, and to learn their dialogues too. So it was a kind of rehearsal as a show, as a work presentation of a work of prayer process. We did it in different places, not very often, not often enough, it's a pity, but we did it in a big cinema, you know, terrible thing. We did it in a dance studio in Brussels. We did it in Ghent, in an antique uh, place, uh, <coughs> a place who sold antiques. So we did it on different places and we kept uh, <coughs> in the mood for it. So that uh, maybe uh, explains some things in the film. So, uh <coughs> sorry. <coughs> the film, of course, cannot be showed. You, uh, you don't know, maybe, but in 1947, one of the first big festivals was Festival in Biarritz, Festival du Film Maudit. It was a festival of films which could not be showed for one or the other reason. It was with Jean Cocteau, was there, uh, André Bazin, and so on. I think my film is a little in this category. It cannot be showed for one reason, because there's a lot of music in it. It goes from John Cage to Schumann, uh, from Gershwin to, uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, and uh, we don't have money to pay the rights, and no distributor is taking the risk of uh, 
screening this film uh, on the Cinematheque can show it, and we showed it in Amsterdam, in different places, in Brussels, of course, in the Cinematheques, but it cannot be showed in a normal cinema. As you, so you are privileged to, lucky to, to be able to see the film. <coughs> uh, also, festivals. You have thousands of festivals, uh, and. Uh, it's uh, impossible to to be selected in it with this film because it doesn't fit in a category. I am not a young filmmaker, so okay. I'm not a woman, okay. This category falls away. I I'm not uh, African, so okay. Uh, I have made my last film 25 years ago, okay. This category. So I don't fit in any category <laughs> at all, you know. People don't look at the films at festivals because they have thousands of entries, you know, with uh, video, uh, with digital, it's so easy. So they have no time to look at it and, okay, no, no festival, no uh, movie theater, just by chance and by luck and by friendship, uh, the possibility to show it here tonight. Uh, okay. Enjoy it. So, thank you so much, Eric, for um, presenting us the film. And uh, like you said, kind of uh, a rare chance to uh, see this film in the cinema. I'm very glad that we had a chance to, to present it here in the DFF. Yeah. Thank you very much. I would like to start uh, by asking you how the film started. I mean, classical... Um, film talk, um, beginning, be, a beginner, because um, I was asking myself, like, was what interested you more in this story? Was it this uh, psychoanalytical, this, this actor that goes to the, um, to the psychoanalysis, yes. or was the, uh, rather the idea to try all these uh, different genres and these little scenes, and then was through this psychoanalysis that this uh, got um, tied together in a way, no? the story? Well, the most important thing for, for us uh, was, uh, of course, all the, the play, the variations on uh, different genres, you know, and uh, there were still an, uh, other uh, genres in it, a screwball comedy, for instance, which we could not shoot. But that was the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Actually, the idea was uh, we were at home, uh, we were looking at movies. I had video beam and um, classical movies to show uh, my friend Adrian. And once in a while we said, oh, that's something you maybe can play. Or, uh, we, or when he was not there, Emil and I, we said, oh, I think uh, Adrian would be interested in this thing. So it was a kind of audition, you know, to give mm -hmm. him a different ways of showing his acting possibilities. So we wanted to have a, a large range of uh, classical things, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was one, uh, and most of the time, he liked uh, the idea, well, always he liked the idea mm -hmm. of doing it, on doing Burt Lancaster, because that's Burt Lancaster in mm -hmm. The Crimson Pirate, the same dialogue, the same thing, or Murder by Contract, which is really uh, totally the same as in the film. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's very far away, uh, because he is not Fred Astaire, <laughs> but... Uh, and we didn't try to do Fred Astaire, but we were inspired by it. Mm. <coughs> and uh, we did a variation, we used the music and so on, on uh, a number of Fred Astaire in Yolanda and the Thief. So there were different approaches of uh, play with this material, playing with uh, cinephilia material. Mm. 
And for us, it was also uh, interesting because it's uh, it's a generation. He's from a generation who doesn't know these films, not at all. He goes to the movies, he goes to blockbusters, but he's not a cinephile. And he before he never saw uh, this kind of movies, so it was a kind of <coughs> of uh, relation around or communication around that. Uh, Subject from uh, do you like one for one film that's maybe interesting? Uh, he, he refused. <coughs> it's wonderful. It's the beginning of a matter of life and death from Michael Powell, and it, I I tell it in two words. People who have seen it may uh, it start with that. You know, you have a pilot. It's uh, Second World War. A pilot in a, 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 a plane who's getting fire, you know. <coughs> and he has contact with his base, mm-hmm. with a, a girl who is doing the contact and try to help him. And you have this dialogue between him and her. And it's the beginning of a love affair. But his plane, it's just... I think maybe 10 minutes long, but it's a love affair. Just when he's dying. <coughs> Sorry. And then the whole film is about uh, fantasy, like many films of Michael Powell, um, uh, how uh, in afterlife he... he uh, um, has again contact with this great love of just before he he died and he's dead and uh, Adrian didn't it was played by David Niven so it was very of course very English and uh, he said I cannot do this but of course if we would have done it uh, I would have transferred it totally uh, like the Fred Astaire uh, nobody knows that it's a Fred Astaire but um, he was not convinced but Mm -hmm. this were the kind of so the idea of bringing the uh, uh, psychiatry psychoanalyst in it was just to find a way to have uh, all these things getting together but it's also a real sitting well Mm -hmm. or I take my microphone let's do this Uh, um, it's uh, something authentic because uh, there is one film who was very, very popular in '68. Uh, it was If, uh, about a revolt of young English boys. And um, what's his name? MacDonald uh, was in it. And uh, it's a film by uh, Lindsay Anderson. And um, and uh, he he, did, he was totally unknown, non-professional, no ambition to play, to act, you know. And uh, there were troubles on the set because he didn't behave, you know. So uh, they say, my God, we have a fantastic, found a fantastic character for this role, and but he is no no professional, and uh, and they had. Problem. So it's a little inspired by this thing where non-professional people are by just by chance and by luck uh, pushed to be a star and uh, not being able to manage it. Mm-hmm. So that's uh, and also the the fighting is uh, really f- from if. It's a kind of same kind of thing, but that's not important. All this, in, mm-hmm. just uh, what's important in the film is uh, just uh, the fantasy and uh, the kind of different moods and uh, uh, yes, like um, a kaleidoscope. You know, uh, you turn, you change, and it's Hollywood on in different sizes in different sides. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's just a, a game. It's yeah. the f- movie is a game, you know. It's like playing with uh, things. 
Yeah, you, you mentioned something already, but I was going to ask, how did it come about this um, working together with Adrian and Mirza? Because, of course, it was an important uh, collaboration there, right? Uh, he, was, uh, he was chosen for the part before you started writing it, or yeah. how did this... Uh, yeah, no, out? because we already did uh, three or four things together, mm -hmm. uh, and you see them in the film too. Mm -hmm. I see all the projects we worked on, film, the musical films we did, the silent films we did, and also the opera I did at uh, Musée d'Orsay with him. Mm -hmm. So they're all this, his past mm -hmm. is in it too, uh, you know, especially when he opens the doors, it's his real past as for the project we worked already on. But here we wanted to have a a bigger project and bigger working uh, together. And um, I also want to ask, how was this um, the choice to make the whole film in English, the the dialogues? Because that even <sighs> is then becomes a, a topic at some point yeah, in the conversation. The, but um, how was yeah, because of course all the films are uh, have an English uh, or all the frag the inspiration are American films. Mm -hmm. Uh, there is no only the Lilium, the version of Fritz Lang, which is French, with Charles Boyer and so on. But it, yeah, and of course we have these accents, eh? mm -hmm. very heavy accents, and the problem of uh, even with accents trying to be uh, authentic, you know. But he is a Viennese, uh, the psychoanalyst, and the, the boy is a Romanian, so. Uh, And that's our daily life also, you know. We speak English with accents, so with many different accents, and that's the way we live now for most of the time, you know, mm. out of England or the States, but even in England and mm. the States. So that's a new language, uh, an English which is not really English. <laughs> Is that also so important? Of like course, it would have been nice to have subtitles. Eh? Mm -hmm. I can understand that, but money, mm -hmm. money, money. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's luxury. Yeah, no, but I thought it was an interesting choice also because of these different origins of the characters in the film mm -hmm. and that they also have to struggle with English mm -hmm. in this uh, therapy yeah. situation. Um, I thought that was... But also I can imagine if he wasn't um, immigrant in Brussels and I mean, I also believe there it's also a place where a lot of people end up speaking English even though it's not their yeah. first language. It's uh, probably the place where mm. people speak English uh, the most probably in the... <laughs> You know, in the, in the commune where I lived in Brussels, saint Jos, it's a small commune from commune, different neighborhood. Uh, there are 140 different nationalities. Yeah, so probably <laughs> so English that's, is what that's you're That's daily life, also. you know, uh, especially in Brussels, you know. Mm. And they don't, not all people are expats or working for Europe, you know. Mm -hmm. With this hundred forty, uh, no, it's a very mixed, exotic uh, place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, another long-time partner of many of your work is also Emil Pop, which you also have uh, shortly mentioned. And um, the decision to write this film as a co-direction that both of you sign yeah, up yeah, as yeah, uh, yeah. directors of the film. Um, how, do you, how do you usually um, share the work or how do you, I mean, you Well, you when I was, that was also the problem when I, wore, when I was acting and mm. pff, that was not clear from the beginning. We did it after time. Um, he, he, I'm not Woody Allen who can act and direct myself but uh, he's uh, from the beginning from all the films he is in it but most of time as an actor because I think he's a fantastic actor if you have seen him in Naughty Boys uh, uh, in small things eh? he is never the main uh, character but uh, every character he plays so I like very much to have him uh, in, in all the films and we worked on the script together And we made, as I told before, we wrote uh, another script, Three Sisters in London, but that we did with the three of us, with Adrian, uh, Emil and I. 
And we had a grant for that uh, Three Sisters in London affair, which is an auto, a book I wrote uh, several years ago about my uh, s- mother and uh, uh, her sisters in London during the First World War. Would have been very nice film, but I don't know. It's one of the thousands of projects uh, filmmakers have sometimes. A lot of uh, work was already in it, and it's uh, all. Most of the filmmakers have this uh, kind of uh, reservoir thing, mm-hmm. where uh, things, projects were never done, never made, or not yet. <laughs> most of the time, when yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's happened that it, yeah, that it. Uh, there was one uh, film of Jacques Tati. He, he had a wonderful script uh, made, and he couldn't find the money. And after his death, now uh, quite recently, I don't remember the name. They made uh, an animation of it. Mm. Some people used it for uh, an animated film. It's uh, Jacques Tati in Edinburgh. Mm-hmm. So it's a, a very nice. Would have been a very nice film by Tati, but he never found the money. So yeah, it's always uh, like that. <laughs> Do we have any questions from the audience at this point? Um, let me see. Um, Are there okay. students who were there this afternoon? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you okay. see now it's something practical about what I told you this afternoon. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, interview and questioning and talking about things as sincere as I can, but uh, still it's uh, talk. <laughs> it's verbal. Yeah, I couldn't be there unfortunately today for the workshop, for, but for the little that you and Bettina were telling me about, um, I thought it was interesting, the contrast, the film is, I mean, not the film, but I wanted to talk about the the situation of the therapy is about a lot about talking and yeah, verbalizing yeah, yeah. the things. So you were just mentioning how difficult it is in the creative process to uh, yeah. to, to, verb, to have to verbalize things. And mm, yeah. then in this film, it's yeah. uh, a situation exactly where that's uh, part of uh, the Therapy is talking, talking. Uh, and that's the reason why it takes so long most of the time you know because they talk you talk a lot or you listen a lot to your patient and uh, you need to listen and to listen and to listen again and again and, and, and as you know it can take years uh, before you have said everything and you have heard yeah. everything so it's it's about the well the beauty, but also the restrictions of the verbal, of mm-hmm. the words, you know. Uh, it's, it's fantastic that we have words and that we can communicate, and of course, and language is something fantastic too. But on the other side, you're uh, in a way also, you feel that you, uh, when you have a love relationship, you feel that you miss a lot of things because you can say it, you can discuss it, but you can feel it and you can say it in with other means, with other uh, with other effects, with other mediums. You know, you you live together and there is something else which happens then, of course. But with works regularly, especially in these important things like love or uh, also, um, uh, pain, uh, different tragedies. Uh, you have not the words. You can you can say words are. Then you see words are limited. Mm-hmm. But and perhaps I think that's, that's a nice. Um, yeah. 
contrast then here when they're talking about the films or the scenes and when we actually see the scenes mm -hmm. that, uh, in this atmosphere and then you have all the other elements, right? It's not a, all just a, um, him describing the scene or the part, but when you see and then you have, uh, yeah, from the framing to the color, to the texture, to the sound, yeah, yeah, to, yeah, yeah. All, to the setting, like all the other elements that make uh, cinema, film, uh, basically. Makes, yeah. Um, how much that uh, says even more than what uh, much more than what he could ever describe about the yeah, scene yeah, so yeah. I think it's such a nice yeah. um, opposition in the film mm -hmm. the scenes of the, them talking about it and then you actually you see, seeing you see it, it yeah. it's, yeah. Um, um, it's a very interesting contrast you. there's a question one second please Uh, you said it was a no-budget film, but I uh, was looking at the settings and sceneries and it was really amazing. They looked so different. They were quite artistic, even the yeah. uh, the pirate scene <laughs> and uh, and even the doors and all this. I mean, it must be built for the film. So were there any other um, who did it actually, who made this uh, decoration? Did you work with them before? And the second question, um, were there scenes in your mind you wanted to put in the picture you didn't do, maybe other films you like? Or was it uh, the, what is this, the whole concept? Or did you cut something out, except this oh, yeah, scene yeah, yeah. Uh, he wasn't comfortable playing? Yeah, no, there were scenes we could not shot. There was one uh, scene I, I liked very much. Uh, it was a uh, Marilyn Monroe in a uh, bus stop, uh, and that, uh, yeah, we, for money reasons, you know, um, and in then the uh, screwball comedy, which would have end the film, you know, maybe in a better way than now, but it was too uh, not expensive, but it was already too much, you know. Uh, well, uh, I like very much uh, to be creative. I, I, I would not be able to be a, a filmmaker with a, with a big budget. I would not like that. Much money. Enough, you know, <laughs> a little more <laughs> is enough. Because I like very much uh, the unique creativity, you know. The pirate, for instance, uh, uh, Adrian took uh, acrobat lessons, you know, on the trapeze and so on, um, because we wanted the real, real pirate scene. I say, oh, it's a pity we can, uh, we cannot build it. It's uh, well, we could have built it, but it was, and so it was a little pity because he had. A little training, not very much, but a little enough. So anyway, we say, well, how can we do it? And that's then you find the idea. We do it as a little theater, you know, totally unrealistic. So that's all the things uh, I like very much to to be. Uh, I'm very proud, you know. It looks good. It's fun, mm -hmm. and maybe the. The thing with the real boat and so on and so on would not have been that interesting for the film. Yeah? So, um, and it was very quickly uh, shot and so on. So, uh, but for some things, for instance, the doors, uh, you're mentioning the doors, because the best, it's very, I knew from experience, it can, it can go wrong. So I need really, we need really to rehearse the perspective to build a model and so on. So it, it's really, it needs a professional, uh, a really professional uh, participation. And also from the cameraman, with what lens can I do it? So it, it, it was a, an expensive uh, shot, you know. But what comes before, when he walks, you know, and you have the, it's stolen from a film by William Klein, you know. Of course, I have the music by Gershwin, I'm very glad, you know, because it works well. Eh? When he, 
Um, but uh, sometimes you need not much and s a lot of scenery I, I fixed myself, you know, because I'm, I say, well, it doesn't need with a little light and we do this and that, you know. Uh, uh, so, uh, yes, it's a mixture uh, uh, of... Uh, possibilities uh, and uh, invention, uh, imagination. Uh, uh, sometimes you say, oh, uh, that's one of the reasons you use black and white, because it, in color it will not look good. So let us use black and white, because for the aesthetics it, you can have more, uh, more uh, clear more, how to say, formal effects. With color, uh, you would have, you need, you would have needed much more. So, I don't know if yeah, I answered your question, but it's a mixture between, uh, we cannot do it, we have no money, or, uh, or we try to do it uh, with other means. And uh, I'm quite good at this, you know, to solve these problems of uh, having no money and trying to find a solution. Not always. Sometimes it doesn't work. Yeah. Do and I, I must say, because I, I forgot to say before, that of course all the people who helped us, uh, especially the professional cameraman and editor who did it in their free time, but also there were institutions, the Cinematheque, you saw the Cinematheque in the beginning, was not putting money in it, but uh, was doing the color grading for free, which most of the time should have cost a lot of money. So there was a theatre, the single in Antwerp, who gave us eight days of studio with technicians and so on for free, you know. So a lot of people were helping or even institutions were helping, but the institute who should have helped us didn't want this film. Okay. Do we have any other questions right now? Um. Um, I wanted to ask about uh, the final scene of the movie because this this instance where the um, psychoanalyst and the actor switch places and the scene before that also when they reenact uh, the screenplay and I feel that scene was very like really spoke to me, to something inside me, but I'm still trying to figure out exactly what was it. So I wanted to maybe get the, the view you had for that uh, last time. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it was finding an ending. <laughs> Very simple. Because as I say, we had a marvelous screwball uh, thing. Uh, with uh, between Adrian and and a girl with a good with a very strong ending. Uh, actually, with the ending, they uh, marry like the most of the time in the screwball comedies. They marry. They walk in the park, and uh, uh, Doctor Schönberg is, is sitting on the the bench. Uh, in that, so. It's what he is explaining in the dream, but it would have been in a in a screwball comedy scene. So now it just uh, let's finish. It's an end, and I have no problems with this kind of uh, very simple uh, endings. It's not a film about big ideas, so big ideas I have uh, other moments uh, not in this film uh, it's just uh, entertainment but I try to have uh, interesting entertaining mm, beautiful entertainment and so on and so let's just end you know it's like a, a symphony they end it's very classical and it's very cliche 
it's a kind of cliche and you know uh, the turning which is very cliche who is the who is the madman who is the doctor is the patient or not and so on so why not play with this cliche and as the film is most of the time a little is it true or not true is uh, Mm, uh, they are kind of um, ruptures, you know, uh, in, especially in the beginning, uh, you are as a spectator, say, for, oh, they are playing uh, because they do the same scene again, you know, they say, oh, I forgot my line. Uh, yeah. So that's, so it's on these different levels, which may be, may be a little difficult for some people in the audience. Um, I don't, one, of the foreign, one of the reasons uh, they didn't want my film for the most important festival in Belgium, which is Ghent, the director of the festival say, yeah, uh, but uh, nobody knows all these references about the films. And I say, uh, well, it's not a quiz, you know, <laughs> it's not a quiz. For me, it's important. For us, it was important to know how we do Lilium and so on and because and so on. But for all the, for the normal audience, it's not important. Uh, that's the kitchen, you know. If you, if you f know it, if you see it or if you recognize that it's Burt Lancaster in Crimson Pirate, maybe you have a little extra, but uh, it's, it's really not, f for me it's not necessary and I hope the audience will accept it as it is without knowing all the references. I totally had the impression that the themes and the, the genres that are being played the and genres are, clear, are so eh? clear and everybody you, who has a... a you recognize them, yeah. eh? so uh, that's the most important thing eh? yeah, for me too. Course. And the style also, yeah. and this is a film noir with the music and so on. And this is a kind of musical and so that's most important. And to know about uh, the real, like I say, it's not a film for... Uh, people who won for the quiz thing, mm -hmm. which is interesting if you study the film and if you analyze it and how we made it and so on, but that's another level or another uh, film studies can do it uh, if they want, <laughs> but uh, I uh, wish them a lot of uh, success because <laughs> 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 it's sometimes very uh, tricky the way we worked with uh, with dialogues also because we used some uh, yeah uh, existing dialogues and so on and it's not uh, it's not always um, for the rights i think it would have been uh, <laughs> terrible any <laughs> <laughs> um. other questions I wanted to ask you something about the temporali temporality of the film because uh, you have mentioned how important <coughs> the, the the duration is, and because um, of the of the therapy, for example, how the duration is this important. And in the, I was thinking of rewatching the film today about the duration of the process of making the film mm -hmm. because you mentioned it took three years, right, with uh, on and off. Uh, <sighs> I don't remember. I, sorry, I don't yeah. remember because it's already for me a long time that the film yeah. was finished yeah. so it took I think three years yeah. Yeah, two and years. that uh, I also I mean I at least had the impression I even noticed a difference in the especially in Adrian like that he you can see that he's a little older not only how he's being dressed but also he has more, more muscles towards the end of yeah, the film the, I have the we, impression we that he really worked we out changed, we <laughs> changed the script we changed the script also because in the beginning it was I'm 21 and then it became 23 and then we said we stop <laughs> we stop now and indeed uh, when uh, he should be the, the youngest, the first scenes, mm -hmm. uh, we shot it uh, as the last scene. Mm. So he, he aged, of course, yeah. he changed a lot. Uh, so, But 
I don't know. I accept it because it's about changing characters, changing appearances. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so I think it's part of it. Um, I stayed the same because I, I was just in this last week and I stayed the same. Otherwise, I would have changed also. Uh, mm. All the scenes in the, uh, in the, yeah, in the therapy in the, scene were, were shot last. Yeah, yeah shot was, last. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. yeah. Because yeah, it's uh, yeah, yeah, interesting yeah, yeah, yeah. to see yeah. how, how these things... And I think it makes sense for the film that it's uh, a process of evolving. Even though we have these daily uh, yeah. marks, it doesn't mean that the day one and day two, uh, there might be a day, but it might be a week a or, week or uh, a month yeah, yeah, between yeah, 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 yeah. therapy sessions. It's just depending a, a on the, session. It's yeah. just a So it's, a I think session. it's interesting. In the beginning, I had the impression, okay, it's going to be like a daily thing. We're going to yeah. see an evolution. No. Yeah, yeah. But then you kind of notice that there's more happening yeah. between the two sessions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So temporality yeah. yeah, gets yeah. more and there is more, more happening in their relation too, yeah. because it's not just patient and doctor. They mm -hmm. are becoming friends, you know. They, they are in his private uh, uh, living room, and he brings coffee and so on. So they have a, mm -hmm. another relationship too, yeah. and that's why at the end uh, it can change, you know, totally. But yeah. it's a little extreme, but okay. Why not? No, totally makes sense, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we have any further comments or questions from the audience? I have one last question. Um, I will, you feel free to ask more questions if you want to. Let me just see how we're time-wise. No, good. Um, we were talking briefly yesterday about the difference between digital and uh, <laughs> analog, right? Because we started talking about the from the projection, but also from the filmmaking perspective, all the, the difference. I mean, you started shooting mm -hmm, 16 mm -hmm. millimeters and uh, at some point started moved to digital. Yeah. And uh, this film was obviously all done in the digital. And perhaps you can talk about a little bit about uh, how that, for example, in how this concretely in this film, how that influenced. Uh, of course, uh, all, all uh, everything shooting. is digital here. And uh, but to give you a very clear idea, Uh, there's one scene, uh, the pirate scene with the special effects, uh, which digital is done like that, you know. It's, uh, you do it in, you have the nice uh, paintings. I ask a friend to do these paintings and it's just done like that. Uh, um, analog, you know, and the lab, it would have cost you a fortune. Because mm -hmm. it's animation and one after one, and then you say no, not not too much. Uh, that's too much. Yeah, no, too slow. Oh no, again. <sighs> really, it would have cost because it's animation. Yeah, but here pff, it costs nothing. So mm -hmm. uh, different ways. It is. Uh, it's uh, more easy, and it made make things possible. Um, and I must say, um, I always uh, disliked editing. <laughs> mm -hmm. So in uh, analog filmmaking, uh, yeah, or... always. Mm -hmm. uh, so I say I dislike uh, editing, and that is one of the reasons why Casta Diva, Naughty Boys, and so on were made with very long sequences mm -hmm. uh, where you cannot cut. So I knew when I was filming, not only because I wanted this duration, this style, but also I say, in one week it will be finished, this okay. editing. On, um, beside me I had my friend Peter Del Peuter, filmmaker, who was three or four months in editing, you know. I could not uh, bear it. Uh, so, so that was the concept. And... When I worked uh, digitally, uh, before that on three or four other films, other projects, these musical films, uh, I enjoyed it very much. Because it was so quick, you could see, ah, I wanted a little more so, and, and, more, and I want a little more music, and so. So it was so quick and so exciting because you could, change a lot of things you know although before you could change too but it 
took it was expensive and it took so much time and so on. Mm-hmm. You know, Which just more room for uh, experiment for trying one just thing. Just let's see them. if this music works on it and so on. <gasps> All these things and that's I li- I enjoyed it very much. You know, to to edit in this way. So of course I would not like to to have three or four months of editing. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> I'm not that kind of filmmaker, but uh, I like uh, that it's quick and that you can uh, change things. You know, uh, interesting uh, anecdote. Um, I just uh, told, did, uh, made refer- reference that the color grading was made at the Cinematheque. And a very professional person did the color grading, uh, uh, but she was really shocked because, and, and I understand that, because uh, she was used to do color grading on classical movies, you know. Um, but, uh, on, uh, she was doing for the new for instance the new uh, Jean Dillman eh? so it must look as close to the original eh? yeah, but the digitalization okay. process processes but this is a new film the, mm-hmm. and I say no no this scene uh, I know it's like this but I want it totally different <gasps> You know, it was not uh, restoration, Mm -hmm. but it was uh, creation, you know. Mm -hmm. No, no, I say, let's try it a little more red. (gasps) A little more red, but it's not red in the original. No, but let's try it, we can. Uh, (laughs) She she could not understand creativity in color grading, Mm -hmm. but it was very easy to work with her. But I, uh, all the time I felt... That she was shocked by <laughs> this way of, oh, what are you doing? Eh? She was not used f- working in in modern movies, in movie making, you know, because now that's what the, everybody is doing this. But it's the contrary in the restoration. You cannot say, oh, um, I don't know which film, uh, Lola Montes by Ophels. Yes, the original is uh, like that. But it would be nice to make it a little bluer, no? No, that you cannot say. So that's her approach to this uh, work, which I understand, but uh, in my case it was... Different. uh, It's interesting. It's interesting, eh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have really... uh, Of course, if it would have been a person who also worked on uh, modern movies... Uh, new movies and uh, old movies, restoration, it would have been different. She would have, but there it was the first time that she was confronted with mm-hmm. the aspect that you could change, you know, and um, you can change a lot. Eh? Mm. Yeah, definitely. With the color grading, it's uh, amazing what you can do. <laughs> I'm, uh, and I must say, <coughs> I must say I, I did it also because I did uh, I did the restoration of uh, all my older films and uh, in Pink Ulysses, which I will show tomorrow, there was one scene I never liked mm. uh, from the texture, from the lighting, uh, the scenery was not good, you know, I said, oh, I say, my God. And as I was the director, we were restoring as close as possible to the original. As I was on direct, I say, I changed this scene. <laughs> you know, I make it very dark. Because I'm the director. I say, I never liked it and now I accept it. Because the scene was good, everything was good, the actors were very good, but the scenery was, yeah, a catastrophe. So, was it also done at that Cinematheque? In yeah. Yeah, no, 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 that, no, no, that was I. <laughs> ah, okay. I so in right, Amsterdam, Amsterdam did the uh, mm-hmm. correction. Right. And he agreed, Mark Paul Meyer, mm-hmm. say, yeah, of course, if you want it like this, mm-hmm. uh, I understand it. And you are the director, you can change as much as you want. The new director's yeah. the the director new cut. The new director cut, cut. but yeah. only for one scene. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
We have a question yeah. here in the front. Sorry, maybe a quick comment on the film because uh, to me there are two different and complementary aspects uh, which I found very interesting. On one hand, it seemed to me um, a very um, uh, rational and analytical reflection on uh, the art of filmmaking, uh, and but on the other, uh, it was uh, it mm, was uh, it's like. Uh, mm, declaration of love uh, towards cinema and in this sense it reminded me to like um, a movie uh, by Agnès Farda um, on um, uh, Monsieur, Monsieur Cinema for made for the um, in 95 uh -huh. for the nine for the anniversary, uh, yeah, yeah, the the anniversary of. of cinema and I uh, wanted just to ask if uh, you also had references um, for these films about movies that in a way are celebrating cinema as uh, an art form in different yes genres. Uh, you are certainly totally right, it's my love for a kind of cinema, you know. Uh, there are other kinds of cinema I like too, but uh, I love very much the Hollywood cinema, you know, and Hollywood acting, and, and uh, there are a lot of films which are, uh, in my way, in my ID, uh, not recognized as they should, you know. Uh, uh, pick it's um, it's not picnic. Yeah, it's picnic. Joshua Logan is uh, it's uh, very the playwright is uh, forgotten, misunderstood. Uh, Inch who wrote bus stop and picnic. It's a very good playwright. His plays are classical American plays, much better than Tennessee Williams in my eyes. And the films made of it, uh, Bus Stop is a wonderful film and the best role of Marilyn Monroe, for sure. And uh, Picnic also, uh, I think uh, I saw the film dozens uh, times. And I think it's a, it's a big movie, you know, uh, a very strong movie and especially in picnic it's very daring about you don't see it here about uh, physical beauty for the girl who plays who is Kim Novak in the in the movie and the boy uh, who, is, who is William Holden and uh, the physical beauty is a problem is a problem for everybody, for themselves and for the whole village, you know. That's actually the subject <laughs> and it's clear, you know. So I think it's a very uh, interesting movie, very nice cinema scope also. And uh, so indeed it's my love for uh, Hollywood movies and I like also uh, to that's my uh, background of uh, film teacher, film historian, and so to uh, again to to rediscover to make things murder by contract. Uh, the film noir is a wonderful film. And Scorsese likes the film very much. Uh, it's one of his favorites. Okay, I liked it also before Scorsese, but okay, uh, it's no problem. So I uh, wrote to Scorsese, dear Mr. Scorsese, you are a fan of Murder by Contract. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you want to to give us your help? No answer. And. Uh, and I knew the editor of Med Editor of uh, Scorsese. Well, I was not totally stranger, you know, to him. So he, he was uh, discovered in Knock, experimental, and so on and so on. So, uh, okay. 
uh, what that's not the most important uh, but uh, trying to to make uh, things well, what you're doing here too to make things to show the things we think are worth to be shown or to know or to rediscover and as I have this uh, knowledge and this love I think it's my uh, duty to uh, to to work with that you know and then I, I make a film or I give I teach a lesson or I write a book um, so uh, yeah that's part of uh, it's ethical it's the ontology. We have to do it, you know. Like musicians, like Arnaud Co, he has to do these things, you know, with the old music and so on. So it's good that we have these people and we have these people who uh, can transmit it. Hmm? Transmitting things. New generations, then. Uh, new generation, yeah. Thank you. So, with this uh, celebrating love for cinema and uh, That's it, yeah. <laughs> transmitting to new generations, I'm so glad that uh, young audiences are also here. Yes, you wanted to. May I, yes? Yeah, yeah, just want a final yeah. word uh, where I be self-critical. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, when I showed the film for the first time, uh, one of uh, friend who helped me also with the money, a filmmaker, Vincent Ball. I played in one little role in his film. Uh, I, told, I asked him, what do you think about the film? And I say, he said, uh, charming. Mm -hmm. And I, I was a little thinking a little, I said, yeah, of course, it's not a big, big film. Uh, it had not the pretension, but charming. But then I was thinking over and over again, and I say, how many films do you call charming? How many films in film history? And I was trying to find my films who I call charming, you know. It's not with pretension, not with this, but who have this quality, this and I was very glad I found, uh, after all, it's right, it's a compliment. Mm -hmm. It's, in a way, he saw it as a charming, and I was saying, yeah, maybe it's not that charming, I don't know, but I understand what he meant with it. So sometimes words are, <laughs> but you have to, to work and to think about it and so on. So charming was for me a good definition mm -hmm. of this film. Yeah, sounds very good. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Eric de Koyber, for being here, for bringing the film you, and Laura. for this uh, nice talk. Thank you very much yeah. for staying. And uh, yeah, I hope when you make a new film, it won't take so long. No, but there is one <laughs> film you haven't screened and who has now very well restored and has uh, cameraman Henri Alcan is mm. A Strange Love Affair. Mm. So okay. uh, it's it was shot on 35. Okay. Yeah, so uh, next time, next time. <laughs> next time, don't forget it. Yeah. That's uh, a lot with uh, Brief Encounter. Mm -hmm. It's a, a, male, a kind of male Brief Encounter. So with a lot of trains and a lot of uh, very melodramatic, uh, in a British way, we try mm -hmm. to do it in a kind of British melodrama, which is different from the American ones. So it's an interesting film you should yeah. uh, we'll show it, it because I think it was never showed in Frankfurt. Mm, yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll keep it for <laughs> next time then. Thank you very much. Thanks everybody for Thank staying. you, Laura. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everybody. Thank you very much.